I am Slick Nick, your personal keto bro. And no, I'm not a doctor, a dietitian, a nutritionist, a personal trainer. I'm just some random guy on the internet who has recently reached the age of 40 and has reached my first fitness goals. I received a comment today from an older video, but I think it's very relevant to the type of content that this channel is about at this point. So I'll go ahead and read that. I received a comment on, an, again, an older video uh, called Zero Guard Buzz Cut Right Head Shape Alternative Definition of Being Attractive. So here's the comment received from Silly Pie, who had this to say, Sir, I'm a lesbian and I absolutely love your hair. This video just motivated me to get a buzz cut. I probably have a flat head and an oval face shape, but who cares? In it for the anti-beauty movement, end quote. So I appreciate that comment because that's exactly what this video is about. Uh, I have probably hundreds of videos on this channel talking about that if you want to shave your head, just do it. And it's not a matter of you having the right head shape. And when I made that video, yes, I intended it for, for men, but I've had several females uh, watch the video and leave a similar comment. So I think it's, I, I think that comment perfectly embraces the concept that let's say you decide to shave off your hair. Are you doing it for the same standard of beauty as say Brad Pitt versus Vin Diesel? It's different standards of what makes a man attractive. And here we have a female saying that, and I think it's interesting that they said they're doing this for the anti-beauty movement. So I want to just camp out on that for a moment and explore that a little bit further. Uh, it's funny because I wrote down some notes here and I Googled this too, anti-beauty movement. As far as females who are wanting to shun the traditions of what makes a female traditionally beautiful. Uh, so I wrote down some things. So one, yeah, shaving off your hair or at least getting a buzz cut similar to a man's haircut. Which is interesting because that in theory makes a man attractive to have short hair because it's more of a masculine uh, trait there. So does it, and this is me asking a question, so for a female embracing the anti-beauty movement to embrace more of a masculine look is that anti-beauty. And that's ironic in some ways because to be an attractive male in theory would to be to look that way. So we're saying if it's a female that looks male, then that is unattractive. And does that mean vice versa is true as well? Another thing I thought of, and actually when I was Googling this, it was talking about women who are growing body hair or letting it grow. So for example, armpit hair, because that's in, in leg hair, you know, that's a somewhat new thing here. Maybe in the last hundred years that that's even become somewhat of a normal thing. So traditionally, that wasn't rebellious or anti-beauty at all. It was just normal. And now modern day 2020s, we see for females embracing the anti-beauty movement that are allowing their armpit hair to grow. So just to point out some irony here, I actually shave my entire torso and arm hair off. Like about once a month, I get the clippers, but I'm a hairy guy. I mean, and if I don't, especially in the summer, it, I start smelling bad sooner. So I actually buzz all, all of my body hair off, all of my chest, back, and under my arms. Another thing I thought of too that I think can go in this category is tattoos. So I get it, like tattoos are quite trendy now and quite acceptable more so than even 20 years ago. But specifically to see females have arm tattoos specifically uh, is something that might fall under this category. It's not to say that if you're a female with a tattoo that it means it's anti-beauty but more so this concept of being covered in tattoos that used to be more of a, of a guy thing to have all these arm tattoos and now we see it more more common with females whether they're lesbian or not so i do think that's interesting and uh, i want to hear from people watching this video to learn more about this one more i put in my notes here baggy clothes so that would be another uh, thing that traditionally we would associate with with men wearing baggy clothes and females wearing tighter clothes but i recently made a video about this too pointing out that even for me as i'm going undergoing my body transformation of cutting fat and building muscle i'm actually doing the opposite of that i'm actually wearing 
tighter clothes. In theory, I'm just, I'm wearing clothes that fit me the correct way. I'm a size medium torso and I'm a size small pants and waist. But it's funny because just to kind of put it in perspective, look at, these are my new shorts that I'm, you know, working out on. And it's funny because these are like the shortest shorts I've ever owned. They're not much longer than my boxer briefs or whatever. So uh, it's interesting how I have actually embraced tighter clothes, smaller clothes, shorter clothes, as I have gotten closer to the traditional standard of what male beauty would be. And now we see a female in the audience watching this video saying that she is doing shaving off her hair and that I've motivated her in that way. So it's really interesting. And I'm not here to say that all women should look like this and all men should look like this. I think what's fascinating is that there are traditional concepts of what makes females attractive versus men attractive. But we can even see this different in cultures because we can look at tribes in Africa where women traditionally have their hair probably shorter than mine. And of course, they look beautiful specifically in that culture, but when you compare it to a woman of European descent in the United States, shaving hair, that is anti-beauty or it's countercultural. So I think that's interesting because it's largely about perspective, but still it kind of weirds us out because we're looking at this through a cultural lens. So like at the beginning of this video, when I mentioned uh, women not shaving under their arms or not shaving their legs, well, we're looking at that in a certain context. Because even for me, back in college, when I spent two summers in Thailand, I noticed that while the Thai women didn't have a whole lot of body hair to begin with, they didn't shave their legs. I never once saw a woman who had shaved legs. Over there, it wasn't as big a deal. And again, I get it, they have less body hair than probably people of European descent. That's probably part of it. But we're looking at this through a cultural narrative, a cultural frame, a cultural perspective where ultimately we see things almost in forms of right and wrong. So uh, going back to this comment about it being anti-beauty. So it's interesting because some females may buzz off all their hair in an act of anti-beauty anti movement, while others do it for convenience or simply because they want to. Or maybe a straight woman who decides to do it, maybe but still there's this concept of feeling empowered by going with the short hair. So I think that's interesting. Maybe what does that say about men with long hair? Uh, because what I've always noticed is that when a guy has long hair and then he cuts it off and gets it short, he's still seen as more attractive once he cuts it off. And I think, you know, Chris Hemsworth, is that his name? Thor, you know, the first couple of movies got the long hair and then he gets the short hair. And then by the way, that's my favorite Marvel movie, Thor Ragnarok. So I think it's interesting. And it, this video is not for me to say, here's truth, here's how it should be. It's for me to say, I think it's interesting because there's not a, a definite truth here. There's a narrative that we can buy into based on how we grew up and what we believe. So speaking of what you believe, where does that belong? It belongs right here in the comment section.